Massive open online courses are leading the greatest upheaval in university education since the advent of the printing press. That's according to a new report published by the U.S. Study Centre at the University of Sydney. Well, our next guest, Dr. Sean Gallagher, is a research associate at the U.S. Study Centre and has co-authored a book on this very issue and joins us now to tell us more. Just firstly, explain for us uh, what these massive uh, open online courses are. Good morning. Massive open online courses take the best courses from the best lecturers from the best universities around the world and put them online so that anyone, anywhere, at any time can take them for free. But the difference is that these aren't video captures of lectures in a lecture, in a lecture hall. These are highly produced instructional videos where they take individual bite-sized chunks of knowledge and break them up and put them into three to five to ten minute videos online so that students can take um, the, these, uh, these uh, videos um, and do a repeat again and again until they understand the concept before they go to the next level. And how does the, the higher education sector, sector feel about this? I mean surely those courses, aren't they sort of protected in terms of intellectual property? There's a lot of upside for universities with respect to MOOCs and which is why maybe reluctantly they were a bit uh, you know, apprehensive about it but they're now engaging with it. If you look at the, the numbers, they're pretty enormous. Up to 7 million students around the world have taken 800 classes from 200 of the world's best universities. But MOOCs offer what might be a holy grail for higher education and that's the opportunity to provide personalized education on a massive scale. So the technology in these uh, in, in MOOCs is, is based on big data and the big data is allowing us to learn more about pedagogy and how students learn on a much more refined and sophisticated level than any lecturer could ever possibly have done in front of a classroom, no matter how good they were. In terms of IP, there will be um, s serious uh, concerns at some points, but I think the overall upside is going to be uh, in the, in the favour of universities. And when it comes to basic courses like Accounting 101, IP is not really so relevant. You just want the person who's probably the best in the world to teach these courses. But then the benefit for universities is to then do what is called the flipped classroom. So instead of a student reading the Accounting 101 textbook, they jump online and do the Accounting 101 MOOC and they use this interactive technology. They get to personalize the learning experience for themselves so that when they come into class, they're not being taught in a standard uh, stand and deliver style lecture, but they're actually um, sitting down with their fellow students, debating issues and actually problem solving, so applying the knowledge that they've done before they've uh, gotten into the class. Are you seeing uh, private businesses uh, cooperate with universities as well on, on tailoring these MOOCs? There's one business, uh, there's, there's the answer is yes, there's several businesses, but one business in particular here in New South Wales in Australia is uh, Smart Sparrow, which is looking at adaptive e-learning. And that's looking at how you can take the best qualities of the best lecturer and turn that into a technology so that as a, as a student is learning, can adapt the, the instruction to their learning style. So be able to you know, take them off to the sideline, uh, you know, a different track if they're not understanding a particular concept, or to fast track them if they're, they're really getting the stuff and it's too easy for them and they need to be challenged more. So it's taking those best qualities and working uh, with them. But in terms of the MOOC platforms, this is uh, many private companies in the United States are actually uh, the equivalent of an iTunes for these MOOCs. Uh, one in particular, Coursera, is backed out of Silicon Valley and it's got um, $65 million behind it to develop uh, as a platform. And it works with universities. At last count it had about 90 of the best universities online. So if you think of a university like a, a record company providing uh, content to an iTunes-like platform, that's the arrangement uh, that is existing and, and, and is starting to flourish in the United States. 
So in, in terms of the business of education, though, uh, while obviously this, this sounds like it's quite disruptive to, to that, uh, do you think, though, that it's, it's not uh, the end of the, the university as we know it? Not at all. In fact, I think that this is going to be a, a watershed in the re, you know, reconsidering the value proposition of the place-based universities. <laughs> While MOOCs might be an ugly acronym, they're actually starting to make universities cool. In addition to these uh, massive open online courses, which allow universities pr to project their brand to anywhere in the world, they're also having a major impact on universities in two other ways. One is through online degrees. Online degrees have been around for a while. There's nothing new about them. However, the MOOC's ethos about interactive, personalized learning and the ability to you know, tailor an education to your needs is now influencing the way that online degrees are being delivered by universities. Uh, Swinburne Online went from zero to 7,000 students in only a 12-month period offering online undergraduate degrees. So a student never has to step on campus at Swinburne University, but they have a much more personalized and interactive learning space. And the satisfaction rates are very high. And the second is that this MOOCs technology is going to turn our traditional place-based universities into what we're calling the Prius University. So hybrid campuses where technology is integrated into everything related to the student experience as much as possible, but Do particularly learning. Dr. Gallagher, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. That's all we have on Tech Report. See you again soon.